So you want your cart to go fast? Not a problem. We're gonna hook it up with an Abitus 5KW AC setup. I'm gonna show you how to do the install, full wiring, everything. Stay tuned. I gotta quit pointing. I point a lot. Have you ever noticed that? All I do is point. I got the cash in the bag, stadium pack Born a rock star in this life, gone live it up on the attack Baby, I'm bad, I just wanna get caught up in this life I'm crazy, I'm mad, doing no cap Only God wants you, better go live it up Cash in the bag, stadium pack Baby, I'm bad, yeah. baby, I'm bad I just wanna stay bad, stay mad, shit by my shoulder Cause they treat me like an outcast I ain't gonna take that, stay back I'll be swinging hard till it hits Alright, so I'm gonna show you the cart that we got for Jolie this is gonna be the cart we're gonna kick off our channel with. This is a bone stock junkyard cart. There was no batteries, there was no controller. There was a motor, but it was it was pretty much gone anyway, so we went ahead and cut it out too. We're gonna to do a whole video on that to show you here. But I'm gonna give you kind of a walk around of the cart right now. Let me show you what, it's uh, 2002, and I'll show you where the tag is. It actually still has a tag on it, believe it or not. This cart was pretty rough. But after we took it apart, we kind of got to looking at it. The frame is actually in really good shape. It's going to be a great cart for us to get going on this build. We're going to be doing an Avitas 5K AC swap on it, which if none of you guys have seen a swap done on a 36 volt cart to a 48 volt cart, it's pretty cool. We're going to go step by step, show you guys how we did that. Everything in it's going to be from firmware to data log, everything else in between. A sledgehammer's job is to break what it hits I have my words Both my fists All my blood Alright, so we're going to take our heat sink plate that was provided in the kit. Now, on my cart, some of them will have dimples here. I actually had to put mine in. So, I don't have any thermal grease. So I don't, I'm not going to do it right now. I will be taking this apart when we uh, go to powder coat the frame. And I will have some thermal grease by then. But for right now to show you how to, we're going to install this. I'm going to take my middle bolt. And I'm going to line it up on this hole right here. And I'm going to screw this in and get it tight. You can take a, a square if you want and get this perfectly square. I'm going to eyeball mine because I know about where it's at. Then you get you a spring-loaded punch, kind of like this one. Pick these up at Harbor Freight. I use this because it's a lot easier to, to get where you want to drill. That way you're drilling in the center. All right, once we're done with that, Take your plate back off. Now we have two spots where we're going to start our drilling. So the two holes that we're going to have to drill are for a quarter 20 thread. Now, if you have the a mechanic set, you'd use a number 10 drill bit. But I don't have a number 10 drill bit, so we're going to have to go with the closest size to it which is a 1364th. All right guys, so now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to do this the old school way since I can't seem to find all my tools. I do have a quarter 20 tap. This is a four flute starter tap, which is what I like to use. A lot of people will use uh, a two flute or a three flute, but I prefer the, I prefer the four flute. So, and since I don't have my T wrench, I'm just gonna use a small pair of crescent wrench. Put a little fluid on this aluminum. Maybe. There we go. Aluminum's pretty soft, so it's not like you have to really get a whole lot on there. The main, main thing is you just want to make sure you get your, your tap straight, which if you can do it with this, you're pretty good. <laughs> I have to drill and tap a lot for what I do at work. So I'm 
pretty, yeah, I'm pretty straight. I'll go ahead and go. Main thing you want to do, go, go smooth, go slow. You don't have to go super fast. The last thing you want to do is break this tap and have to try to get the tap out. I can tell you right now from experience, that is not fun. Now that we've got our holes drilled and tap, we can go back in. Don't tighten that up all the way. Now we've got all three of our screws, and then go in and tighten them down. Remember that you are going into aluminum, so you don't have to get super duper crazy with it. I go till they're snug. If I had a torque wrench, I'd probably torque them down, but there's really no need. All right, guys, next step is actually gonna be bolting our new Navitas Tap 2 controller down to our new heat seat mount. Now guys, when we pull this back apart later in another video, I'll add all the thermal grease and everything, like I said earlier. But right now, this is just to show you guys how to put this in. So, all right, so this kit has the TAC2 Navita 600 amp controller. Now we are gonna mount ours facing in because when, if you're outside and you do get caught in the rain, the water is gonna come down and it's gonna drip on the outside. We don't want our electronics there. We're gonna put them on the inside, that way they stay nice and dry, because there is nothing worse than water in electronics. I promise you that right now. So the kit does come, these nice little shiny screws, and yes, they are metric. I'm going to use a eight millimeter socket driver, or, or nut driver like that. You can use a uh, socket wrench if you want, I don't see the need in it. And yes, you are supposed to torque these down, but like I've repeated a hundred times, we're gonna be pulling this off again. Find the hole. Remember, guys, you are threading into aluminum. So I know I've said that before, but aluminum is really easy to strip. All right, just like that. Now our new TAC2 Navita 600 amp controller is in. All right, well here is the Navita's five kilowatt AC setup. Guys, this is a pretty substantial motor. It's, it's heavy, it's every bit of 60 pounds, if not more. So be careful when you lift it. There are a couple things you do need to do before you can just put it in. All right, so first things first, the motor's too big for us to put in there with the, uh, the driver's side rear shock on. So that's gonna have to come off before we can actually put the motor in. That's why removing the body when installing this is so much easier. It's gonna take a 9 16 deep socket wrench, and I use an impact, I cheat. Go ahead and pull your shock off. I already undid the bottom, so slide your shock out. 
Now you'll have enough space to put your motor in. Now since this cart's gonna be getting a six inch lift, we will be replacing the springs with some better springs. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this shock as well. Before, this motor is not light. <clears throat> now, I went ahead and made two marks on mine. That way, I knew exactly where to line up. Yeah. Right there. Woo! Like I said, that's a workout. And I was leaning over with this camera. Yay! Alright, so we're putting in the bolts on the motor. Navita sends you three extra bolts to add to the existing bolts that you already have on your cart. That's due to the amount of torque that this motor can produce. Guys, if you don't put all the bolts in this motor, you take a very good chance of snapping all the bolts off. So make sure when you do this, you add the three from the kit plus the ones that you already had from the factory. Alright guys, in this next step, we're going to be running our main cables from our motor to our controller. Now, you can use the stock cables that come in the universal takeoff kit that you can order through us at golfcartsmodified.com. And these are just direct, easy go, 48 volt wiring harnesses that you will need to do this kit if you have a 36 volt cart. Now, I don't like stock wires, so I run custom tech flex on all my cables, and then I have heat shrink that I have made with my logo in it. You can have any logo you want made, and I'll put a link in this. I get this from wirecareinc.com, or wirecare.com, excuse me. So, but you can get it done in just about any uh, color. They'll put your logo on it. It's pretty cool stuff. So, I always start from the outside in. Uh, it just makes it a little easier. This is a half inch nut. You'll take your lock washer and your flat washer out. You put your cables on. Flat washer, lock washer, and your nut. And then just take your wrench. Make sure you're going the right way. Go ahead and tighten it down. Go through your loom. Jammer's job is to break what it hits. I have my words, both my fists, all my blood. I bleed for this. I bleed. Guys, something I forgot to add were these boots. Navitas provides these with you in the kit. Pretty nice. You got a solid side and a split side. All you do is run your wire through the solid side first. 
until you can see your contact in the middle. There you go, just like that, Ryan. Now put it down, tighten up your contacts, you'll have your flat and your lock washer. Guys, make sure to get these tight. You do not want anything loose on this motor. Uh, loose connections lead to resistance, that leads to heat, leads to melting, which leads to failure. So always make sure to tighten any connections on your electrical system. Batteries, motor, controller. Alright guys, for this step, we're going to be switching our half inch socket that goes from the back of the motor over to a 10 millimeter socket <laughs> that I left right there. So, the elusive 10 millimeter that everybody seems to lose. Thank you, Canada. I don't know how many 10 millimeter, or so 10 millimeter sockets I have, but I guarantee you I'll probably lose this one by the end of the night. So, all right, guys, so you're going to come back in here, you'll trace your wires. This is a very important step. And if you have to, you know, pull them out one at a time. Make sure you get this done right. You don't want to, you don't want to hurt your motor or your controller and then have to wait and get another one. So, just take your time, make sure you get this step done right. So I'm going to connect the U, the U connection first. And the way I like to do mine is I'm actually going to run mine up and behind. And you can run it over here, but it's a pretty long cable. This is the factory cable that come with the, uh, it came with the uh, easy go wiring harness, 48 volt wiring harness that you have to order. Once again, I don't have a small torque wrench. I need to buy one. It's on my list of things to buy. Snug. Okay. And now, I'm going to run my... My B. Run it through my loom. I'm gonna run it the same way. Gotta be I say I'm gonna run it the same way. I might not have enough cable. Nope, I don't have enough cable. I'm gonna have to run this one up front. Which I don't really care for, but whatever. I'm gonna make do where I can. I thought I had enough cable. Then my last one is my W. This one's long enough. I'll run back here. I'll run it back here with my other one. If I run it the other way, it's going to be right in front of my battery positive. I don't want that. All right, so. All right, now we've got our main battery wires run. Pretty same, pretty simple setup. You've got a U, a B, and a W. Three big wires, pretty basic setup right there. All right, now let's get to the other parts. 
All right, guys, with this kit, you get a bracket for your run toe switch. I'm gonna use this corner right here. It's the eight millimeter socket or eight millimeter head, whatever you wanna use, a socket or a nut driver, it doesn't matter. And I'm gonna mount mine facing up. Now, if you look at mine, I have a lot more cable with mine. I extended mine because I'm actually going to run mine to the other side of the cart eventually. But this is the bracket that comes with the kit, so we wanted to show you exactly how that goes in there. And there's your run toe switch. All right, guys, we're gonna be putting in our speed sensor wire and our stripped down wiring harness that we did. We got rid of all the unnecessary cables. So like I said, this loom and all this right now, we're gonna go in and clean that up. You know, I already ordered some different loom. It's gonna match with the color of the cart. But for right now, just for, you know, install purposes, we're going to rock with what we got. So, first things first on this kit, this is just a takeoff wiring harness for a 48. You got to remember, this cart was a 36 volt when we swapped it to a 48. So, we had to have the, the wiring harness to go with it. So, now that we got it, let's go ahead and put it in. So, I'm going to start... With all my connections that go up to the dash and this tray right here you got a little hole to run your wires but you got to be careful because there's another frame rail on the easy go right across from it you got to get them all through there too at least i do because it drives me nuts knowing they're not in there all right pull that all the way in Okay. You got a 16 pin connector. There's only one 16 pin connector on the controller. So push that in, make sure it clicks. And then my, uh, my throttle sensor, the wires were cut because this was a junkyard cart so I just put bullet connectors on mine but we are going to switch it out to a really nice weather pack I just got to get some order yeah. nice okay so this long orange wire this is for your battery charger. I'm gonna run it across our battery pack. This wire right here goes to the hot side of our solenoid. It goes on the big lug. Okay. Then your yellow wire goes on the small lug on the hot side. And then your blue one comes on the outside or the, the post side. All 
right, and then you have your run toe switch cable, which I'm gonna I'm gonna run my run toe switch to the other side. I, I like it better on the driver side than I do the passenger side. Then you just take your other the rest of your cable that we threaded through the bottom. You got to run it up front. There's actually a hole right there on an easy go. You're gonna run your wires up through there, and then we'll plug everything in. Okay, guys, this is the uh, wiring harness that comes from Navitas. This is what goes to your speed sensor and your other grommets that are on the back of the motor. They're pretty simple, it's pretty plug and play. This controller. This goes to your controller. And then these run to your motor. So come back here to the motor. You'll see that we have these two back here. These are just regular weather pack connections. Okay, got those in there. Now, probably not going to get that through your loom, but I will zip tie mine because I don't like anything loose. come around to the controller and there we're plugged in all right guys we're going to show you how to put the OTF in real quick it's pretty quick and easy this is the eight pin connector that you have now I'm not going to be hard mounting my OTF because we're going to be pulling this cart you know apart several times so this is just kind of show you what we're going to do here. So you have your OTF and it comes with plenty of cable. There's your connection in. So I'm going to do on this part since it's got a hole already there. I'm just going to run that through and I'm just going to loosely leave my, my OTF sitting on the cup holders. I'm going to take this connection and I'm going to go back through the hole where we did our harness set. Alright guys, when you go to put your connector in, there's your 8 pin. There's your 8 pin on your controller. It's right at the top. Go until it snaps. It's that easy. All right, guys, here we got our wiring up front. So you have your normal forward and reverse switch right here, right? Okay. And it's, I, I didn't, I couldn't find anywhere where the color codes were at. So it's orange on top, followed by the gray in the middle. And then you're gonna have a green with black and a just a solid green. Okay, your solid green is what goes to your switch. Okay, your green black and your red go to your buzzer, which if you're gonna tune your Navitas kit, you need to have this plugged in. I know it's annoying, I don't really care for the buzzers either, especially this one, it is super loud. But if you're gonna tune it, you gotta have it. Okay, so that leaves you with your yellow and your white and yellow. Now. This is going to sound pretty bad considering I do a lot of carts, but I actually didn't have a TXT key. So I'm going to put a switch in for now. You can use any switch. This is a 48 volt, 12 volt to 48 volt switch I got from one of the box stores. I don't remember which one. 
I kind of shop them all, so. Man, that was a long video, but look at you. You stuck it out. Guys, thank you for watching. Make sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Also, make sure to hit that bell and subscribe. We have a lot more videos coming out, not just how-to videos, discussion videos, build blogs, and everything in between. Guys, I hope y'all have a great week. Stay safe, and remember, go modify.